What if I told you that houseplants don't exist? There is no such thing as a houseplant. Every plant I'm about to show you in this video, hundreds and hundreds of houseplants never evolved in a home. In fact, they only became houseplants when homes started to get built. So in this video, behind these doors are some incredibly rare plants, some incredibly common plants with interesting stories, and then some plants that, quite frankly, I think you've probably never seen before. So let's take a look. We're here at the San Diego Botanic Garden, which is my hometown botanic garden at the World of Houseplants exhibit. I've got to meet a guy named John who knows everything about everything in this room. So let's take a look. This place is crazy and there he is, John. Hey, Kevin. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm nice doing to see you. I'm doing very well. Welcome you to the conservatory. Well. Thank you so much. I've, I've been to the place before, but I've never been to this room okay and i have to say i've never seen this many house plants in one place oh there's a lot of plants life. there's a lot of plants there's a lot they're of in plants. the sky they're on the ground <laughs> so john who are you at the san diego botanic garden so i'm director of gardens mm -hmm. at san diego botanic garden and so if it involves a plant mm -hmm. it's under my oversight so, so everything basically. everything everything yeah, yeah everything yeah, there's a lot of other departments here but yeah. if it's about plants putting plants in keeping plants alive yeah installing plants Doing the irrigation, that, that's all me. I well, heard, not all I me. I heard you've been cultivating them for a hundred years. Yeah, at least a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's he been has a long the special time. sauce on longevity, <laughs> not only in plants, but in human life. Okay, it's almost hard to figure out where to begin, but right to my right oh. is something that I've personally never seen in person. Very excited about this. This is the corpse plant or the corpse flower. Mm -hmm. And I understand that this actually bloomed this past Halloween. It did. We yeah. had two that bloomed about three weeks apart. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the coolest plants in all of nature, in my opinion. I, I mean, just look at the skin. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks like this is reptilian and yeah. uh, I expect this to ribbit, ribbit here in just well, a second. Well, it's that, John, and it's also the fact that a plant of this size, this is, you were telling me, just a leaf, technically, botanically, this yes. is a leaf, not yeah. a stem with leaves and branches right. and all that. Yeah. And then it's grown in a pot that, quite frankly, I grow tomatoes sometimes in a pot that yeah. big. So it's crazy that it can live this way. So what do we need to know about this thing? Well, it's, it's rare. So they're from Sumatra. There are mm -hmm. about a thousand left in the wild. Oh, wow. And you can find them now in cultivation. They're, they're becoming more and more common. Yeah. But one of the crazy things about these is that this is a plant that only makes a flower every three to five years. And then every three to five years, it's in bloom for three days. Mm -hmm. The first night it opens as a female. Okay. The next night it opens, all the flowers open as a male. So the issue is, okay. who do you have nearby when you you're a female flower? You can't do flower? just one. You just can't have yeah, one. Yeah. So you've got to have another one nearby. And so oh. th as they diminish in nature, where does this poor plant find a mate? And so that's one of the issues in terms of uh, preservation of sure. just open space is that yeah. there are few plants. So this one opened and then there's this huge one over here, this which I really want to take a peek at because yeah. this is sort of the precursor to this, which is much, much larger. Mm -hmm. The color, it really does to me look like someone drew, like drew a cartoon of an alien mm -hmm. plant and this is what they came up with yeah. because of the size of it. And then the fact that you would say, like you were saying, this is this is a, a stem with one leaf, yeah. botanically speaking, but yeah. it does not look that way. It looks like there's right. hundreds of, of leaves on yeah. it. It's just yeah. a crazy plant. And so when it opened, what? how did it work? I mean, well, so it, it, it heats up. It, it heats up and the spadix, which is this big middle portion, it looks like a tower, yeah. that thing gets hot. Yeah. And it goes to up to 107 degrees. And when it would get, so this is a chemical reaction that is making it stink. Sure. And so as the chemical reaction would start to happen, we could actually see it vaporize. And we have footage on our website where you can actually see it like smoke coming wow. off of this plant. And when it would begin to fire off all of that chemical reaction, then you could see the smoke start to happen. <laughs> and then you would get hit with the wafting stink I was you know about to ask, it, it literally it would just like roll off in waves is it accurately named that it does smell like a, a i've never smelled a corpse guys so i don't know what that smells like but i have a sense that it doesn't smell good it doesn't smell good it smells like dirty diapers oh. dead rotten fish oh. uh really rotten onions and it's, it sort of changes the profile as the days <laughs> goes on but that <laughs> if you want to smell one in full stink it has to happen the first night okay all right so i see that we have plants on the ground, and we also have plants 
sort of hoisted up into the sky. Yeah. What's the story on some of these guys, like this guy right here? Oh, that's an anthurium, and, and it's just gorgeous. It, it's finally found its happy spot. Yeah. So one of the things that I would say to people about houseplants is, if you have it in a spot where it's not happy, try a different spot. Sure. So in a greenhouse like this, if we move the plant over here on this chandelier, it might thrive and do really well, but mm -hmm. on that little zone over there, it's too dark. Okay. Or not enough air circulation. So if at Something first you don't succeed, particular. they can be very particular. Yeah. And you may find the same plant, if you just moved it 10 feet, that it's like a whole different world for it. Yeah. And, and so, you know, don't give up. If you, you're yeah, having yeah. struggles, just find another happy spot. Well, it's interesting that you say world of houseplants, right, as the exhibit, because it's almost like the world of plants that some people decide to put in a house. Yeah. Right? Because it, it's not really that any of these sh should technically be in a home. Of course they can. Sure. But, but if you want to care for it well, at least what we've always said is, okay, figure out where it evolved, figure out how mm -hmm. and what conditions, and then just do your best to get close to that in your home. The plants pre-existed houses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they were fat and happy out in nature, and then we decide we want them to live with us. Yeah. So we bring them in, and then we and just- we get mad that, that they're not doing what we want. You're you know? not happy here, <laughs> honey. You know, yeah. so what yeah. we need to do is figure out, how were you living in nature? Were yeah. you happy out there? Did you like more light, less light? Maybe am I keeping you too dry? Sure. Maybe too wet. Yeah. Uh, I should get open a window. You know, I hate a stuffy room. Yeah. My windows in my house are open every day I, of the I've year. I've either got some you know? AC going or a breeze going. Yeah. I've got you know? to have air. Yeah. And so if you put a plant in a stuffy room and you think be happy, and it says, I hate this. Yeah. Open a window. Ch change it up. Change, change, change it up. It, it kind of brings us to this right here, which I was walking around seeing a little earlier, and it just kind of shows you the same, same exact species, mm -hmm. same age and everything, Yeah. grown in complete darkness. So you mm -hmm. see what, like some etiolation where it's, it's mm -hmm. sort of stretching for the light. You see, this is a low light one that's been basically, I think a light source from one angle right. only. Yes. Uh -huh. And so that's why you see it kind of climbing out or, or growing out this way. And then of course you see just what this plant wanted you to do to it, which is just put it in, in full sun and, and treat it like the place that it evolved. And so it's a really cool example actually of, of care and impact, mm -hmm. right? And then I guess right. right here too with the over underwatering. Sure. And then too much light, which I think for most houseplant owners probably is not their problem, but usually not. it can yeah. be, I sure. guess it can be if you put a really sensitive plant in a, in a highlight area, but you get that burning yeah. on those leaves. And, and typically plants will adapt. Yeah. So if you move them slowly from a spot, maybe with low light and you want to put it in a brighter light area, yeah. just don't move it all at once. Mm -hmm. So, you know, move it a few feet every week and then eventually it, it'll, it won't sure. burn typically, but, yeah, yeah. but if you go straight from less light to boom, a sunny window, you'll just burn the leaves. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at what's going on on this huge wall. I heard you saying something about these pitcher plants up here. Yeah, those are really cool. And yeah. that's a really a more popular house plant than they've been ever before. I think so. So yeah. they're easy to grow. Yeah. Uh, they're very cool because they'll catch all the little gnats and flies in the house mm -hmm. for you. And they're beautiful. And, and so, uh, but this particular wall, this is a green wall that we put together. It's got rock wool in there, water flows through, but a lot of the plants that are on that wall came to us because of the federal government. Yeah. And uh, they were being smuggled into the country uh -huh. and they became evidence. And so we are literally a veritable evidence locker for the feds. And so we have, a, we have a lot of plants here where it's been entrusted to us as literally legal evidence. We can't propagate them, we can't sell them, we can't give them away. They literally are preserved as It's as if they're under case. lock and key exactly at, a, at an right. evidence lock or maybe like a more illicit substance that's yep. hidden at the police precinct or right. something. It's the same thing here. Exactly. Have you ever had, I mean, cause that's a big, that's a big issue, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when you're dealing with the rarity levels of different houseplants and we all know guys how crazy some of these houseplant <laughs> people can be. I was just at a conference and it was yeah. an aeroid greenhouse oh. I saw and everything from them is on the up yeah. and up, but yeah, yeah. what they were saying is like the poaching and mm -hmm. the stealing and all this. And so have you ever had someone say, hey, we need that that pitcher plant or that this oh, for a piece of evidence? We, we, we have, uh, no, we've never actually had them come back okay. uh, from yeah. the feds yeah. yet and, and actually ask for the evidence back. Usually yeah. things get dismissed or, mm -hmm. or they get, you know, plea bargained out and whatever, but, but we have whole areas in the garden where we have plants that, and every plant in our garden has a tag. Mm -hmm. We know where it came from, the date it came wow. in, 
how it was planted, by whom it was planted. Yeah. Uh, and then they have other information for us, like that has an R on it, it's restricted. So we know that we can't even give that away to our friends. You know, mm -hmm. this, this mm -hmm. is literally an evidence piece. How much, how much on this wall is, a, is an uh, evidence locker? That probably uh, maybe 20% wow. of, of stuff on that wall. That's crazy. Yeah. I would never yeah. thought that was a real thing. They're, they're cool. Okay, let's take a look at some of the stuff that's hanging up here. Maybe starting with this, I mean, Spanish moss, right? Yeah, yes, Which is, it is. I think a lot of people, when you go to a store, especially if you're not really into plants, you're mm -hmm. like, oh, it's just a decor item. It's not alive, it's, mm -hmm. it's dead. But what, what do people need to know about it? It's sure easy to grow. I yeah. mean, it, it, it's a Tillandsia, yeah. you know, in the bromeliad family. And here's really kind of cool. You can see a growth point. Yeah. And, and this thing will flower for us. Yeah. Uh, and it, it really grows pretty well. And so it's a great plant. If you want to have that really kind of exotic jungle look, if mm -hmm. you've got a lot of tropicals, this is very, very easy to grow. We just hit it with the hose once in a while. We give it a little light dilution of fertilizer. Okay. That's yeah. one of the things I think people forget yeah. is that plants need to eat. Mm -hmm. So when we had the orchid show in here, a woman came up to me and she said, you know, uh, I've had an orchid in my house for two years and it's never rebloomed. And I said, well, when was the last time you fed it? Yeah. And she said, well, I water it about every seven or 10 days. And yeah. I said, when was the last time you fed it? And she said, well, I've never fed it. And I said, well, darling, what if I brought you to my house, put yeah. you in a corner, I made sure you got light and water, but I didn't feed you for two years. Be a little emaciated. You're, you're, yeah. you're gonna be a little, <laughs> little tired and not at your yeah. best. And so that's what happens yeah. with plants. And so I think one of the ways that people fail is that plant can't walk away and find a better place mm -hmm. to be. You are its provider. Mm -hmm. And so I like to use a, a, a system, I call it weekly weekly, where you give it a weak concentration of fertilizer on a weekly basis. Okay. So if it requires a, a tablespoon per gallon of water once a month, well then give it one quarter tablespoon mm. once a week. So you meter it out a little I bit meter more it than, out. than yeah. the and average. Sure. So, so for so a plant like this, I think a lot of people with Tillandsia especially, they're like, Okay, well, it's an air plant, so does it does it really need food, or at what rate does it need food? So, if you were caring for Spanish moss, which you are, and mm -hmm. I honestly, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen them hanging this sort of well. Mm -hmm. You know, they look mm -hmm. really healthy. What's the ratio? Like, what's the care protocol? So, in this space, and yeah. so if if this were in my garden at yeah. home, rather than in this space, it'd be the same regimen, really, and that is that we're doing a dilute concentration about every seven to ten days. So mm -hmm. uh, that micro dosing. In this big space, we either use a Siphonex, which, you know, p mix it in a bucket and mm -hmm. then you pull it through with the hose, or we use a Dositron, which is mm -hmm. a, a little machine and we can fertilize everything with water-soluble fertilizer. So you just take so, a sprayer and, and just, we just spray it yeah. down. Is One it? of the added benefits in this space, too, is we have reverse osmosis water. Uh, That's really helpful. Yeah. It's clean. It doesn't have all the salts that we have. Yeah in San Diego water. And so a lot of times people have burnt edges on their plants. They don't look so great. They look a little yellow. Yeah. A lot of times it's because we have awful water. Yeah. In so, San Diego. so for those who are obviously not in that position where you can get RO water, mm -hmm. a lot of houseplant growers are like, can I water from tap? Maybe, maybe I'll leave the water out, let mm -hmm. the chlorine off gas. If I have chloramine, I need to throw a tablet in there. Right. What would someone do? Cause RO water is basically pure water. Yeah. It's as close as you can get to pure water. Mm -hmm really at all. Mm -hmm. um, but what if someone throws it through a filter? Is that, is that better or is that worse? It's better, yeah. sure. You know, in fact, I water my orchids and things at home yeah. with my under the sink filter, which is, okay. you know. A, like a carbon really, filter. It's like, yeah. yeah, it's got carbon filters and yeah. multi resin beads and that's better than nothing for sure. sure. And it really makes a difference. Yeah. But, but if you're using tap, like this little plant behind you, this is a common house plant. Beautiful plant. You know, it's yeah. just beautiful. And um, this is B Brazil, right? Yeah, Philodendron it Brazil. is yeah. Philodendron Brazil. And so if that were just given tap water, you'd see pretty soon these edges would be turning brown. And that's the, the, and the dissolved solids in there. Yeah, the dissolved solids. Yeah. 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 And, the, and just high alkalinity of our water. Mm -hmm. So you, you'll do a lot better if you give better water. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't have to, you don't have to have a big reverse osmosis. You have to go crazy with it. Yeah. Crazy thing. But just yeah. the purified will help. Sure. Yeah, this is a great specimen. The thing yeah, that's, that shocks me about this, I've grown, I'm not going to say even a significant percentage of the mm -hmm. plants in here, but maybe a cultivar, a more common cultivar, pothos, philodendron. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I've seen a collection so well preserved. Like every, <laughs> everything looks good, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and speaking of, I mean, I'm seeing something up here that I think, 
we probably ought to talk about because I've yeah. never seen this in my oh, physical okay. life. I've seen this on the internet, in sure. dreams, sure. in fantasies, but this right here yeah. is potentially the rarest plant in the collection, right? It, it is. Yeah. It's probably the rarest plant in the whole garden. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, and that's philodendron, a spirit of Santu. And uh, it's my spirit plant. That's my yeah, last name. That's right. That's your name. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I need. I need this plant somehow. I need it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, it, it, they're hard to propagate. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, they're almost extinct in the wild. There are very few in the wild. So, this is a very hard plant to get your hands on. And how was that taken by? How did you guys come across it? Well, it was given to us yeah. uh, as part of a collection. Okay. Which we're eternally grateful yeah, for. Yeah. The, the people will sometimes include us in their wills. And, oh, really? Or we'll get uh, donations from other botanic gardens, too. Okay. We actually exchange material. Mm. And so if we, uh, you know, yesterday in the garden, it was so cool. I met people from Lebanon. Wow. And from the American University, and the university was pretty much wiped out, but they're now trying to turn what was the old American University in Beirut, Lebanon, into a botanic garden. Yeah. And I said, we'll hook you up. <laughs> you know, we'll, yeah, perfect. Because there is a big organization called the BGCI, and okay. we share plant material with so other like botanic So let's gardens. say you, you guys are trying to grow something, it's not working super well, and you can hit up a partner and say, hey, would this be better in your area right. type of thing? Sure, yeah. 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 Or, or we publish lists for each other. Yeah. They'll say, we have these available. Would you like some? Oh, heck yeah. We'd yeah. love some of that. And then by the same token, we offer some of our plants to sure. other people. So it, sure. it's it's like a big plant swap. Does the uh, does the Espiritu Sancti, if I was to create my own botanic garden in my backyard, could I yeah. join the BG? Oh, and could I somehow receive well. <laughs> this kind of thing? <laughs> Wouldn't that be swell? It would be. Well, yeah, what do we need to know? Swell. I mean, this plant... What, what's striking to me about uh -huh. it is it's like almost the ex, most extreme characteristic expression of yeah. of that type of anthurium, right? Like it is. You extremely know, that, thin. Almost an arrow, you know, yeah. like an arrow point, this little leaf. It's very, very thin. You know, this is an epiphyte. It's going to be growing up in trees. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things people frequently err on, mm -hmm. that they don't give plants enough light. Mm -hmm. So if it's growing up in the crotch of a tree up high, well, that's a good clue. Give it more light. Sure. You know, they're they're sure. really growing in the treetops. And you can imagine if we were in the jungle in Brazil, that thing just hanging there with the roots. And can the, you imagine? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine walking around and actually seeing it? Like oh. truly endemic, oh you know? Wow. Wow. It's, it's very cool. Yeah. You know, and, but on the other hand, and I look at that and I think it's the most valuable plant we have, uh -huh. arguably, in the uh -huh. whole garden. And then I look at this anthurium over here or, or some of these other aeroids. And I sure. go, that to me is, is equally as stunning. Yeah. You know, they're absolutely beautiful. Well, it's interesting how the collector market, of which I'm at least somewhat familiar with, I'm more of an edibles grower myself mm -hmm. and I dabble in house plants, but the collector's market really makes the whole market. Sure. Because there's no other real place to buy and sell these, right? right. I mean, right. It, unless you're sort of doing it on Etsy or Facebook yep. or yep. some sort of Instagram group or something, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, I've seen, let's just say, I've seen some prices oh, yeah. for that that get a little crazy. It's pretty nuts. What, what's happening over here with these uh, little mini terrariums? You know, the, boy, the terrarium craze was so huge in the 70s. You this know, is a cool a, way to do it. It's just, yeah. don't even bother. Just put a glass dome. Put a glass top. dome over the top of it. You have to be careful. You don't put it in too much light. That's the mm -hmm. one thing because, you know, it, it's just like your car. You get a greenhouse uh, effect you know, going, green right? yeah. Greenhouse effect, it's going to heat up and the ultraviolet rays stay in there. But if you get the right spot, isn't yeah. that so cool? It makes its own humidity. So how are you deciding which plants you're going to be putting under here? Just ones that prefer a lot more humidity than you can even provide in the greenhouse? Yeah, as you can see, this is more low light. So we're going to put in things that are lower light, yeah. uh, higher humidity, button mostly fern you know, here. little ferns, yeah. you know, yeah, lemon button fern. Uh, there's some leather fern in there. So we get a lot of questions about, as far as houseplant care, like how do I keep a maidenhair fern alive or some mm -hmm. of these more delicate ferns? Sure. Maybe this is the play. This would be is the there plant? an understory sure. plant for the most part, right? right? And yeah. so you put a terrarium on them, keep the humidity high, mm -hmm. and you're, you're indoors, you're not getting a ton of light anyways, right. and that's one plant that probably is okay with it, right? Yeah, especially the maidenhairs, they want high humidity. You know, yeah, I'll yeah. never forget, I was in Zion Canyon National oh, Park. Oh, love, that's my favorite I, lo I love it, I absolutely yeah. love it. And so <laughs> here is this red sandstone wall. Yeah. It's 110 degrees. We are just sweating like crazy, and we look, water's kind of weeping mm. and coming out. And Right in front of us are all these maiden hair ferns. Yeah. They're thriving. Yeah. Well, what, what are they getting? It, you know, it, I always say, give a plant what it wants and mm -hmm. it will love you to death. Mm -hmm. So it's getting the right water, clean water, and it's in dappled light. So as long as the humidity is high enough, it's going to be it's happy. Fine. So yeah. yeah. So this is a great solution to 
no humidity. And where, like, if, if I wanted to do this, which I immediately do upon seeing it, <laughs> where, where would you recommend sourcing these domes from? Because I've never seen them quite like this yeah, before. Yeah, those, those are really nice ones. So, you know, eBay is a great source. Yeah. Uh, you know, look, look up uh, terrarium domes. Um, there are, Etsy is another really good source frequently. And then are these Antique just, stores. Are these like know? shallow and wide terracottas with mostly like a pe sort of a peaty moss you, mix yes. in there? Yes, it, with, with uh, just a little moss yeah. and a little bit of extra sphagnum just to make it look good. How are you, ca how are you caring for these? You know, with the Spanish moss, you can come through and, sure. and hit it with the weekly weekly. Right, right? so we, we'll pull with the top this. off about once a week. We're going to give it a little shot of water, and then we put the dome back on. And again, that, that whole idea of weekly weekly. So you're getting a little fur little, every now and then. A little yeah. bit, yeah. just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like truly a micro dose. Okay. Do you ever have to then prune this out because it's going to overgrow its own terrarium? These have only like... been in here about three or four weeks. So if you okay, wanted this yeah. to perpetually be like that, yeah, you're going to you probably prune that every two months or so. Propping it down and right. all that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you just Got go it. through and thin it. So in the three, four weeks that this show has been open, we haven't trimmed these yet. Okay. So, so yeah. you know, it's, it's fairly slow growing. Sure. Even so. Yeah. Can you talk to me about caladiums? Because this is a plant that I think it's probably one of the more common mm -hmm. houseplants that people will start with, because I think they get attracted to the very delicate leaves, but also yeah. the vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. And so how are you care? Because again, like I've never gotten yeah. a caladium to look quite <laughs> this good before. I'm a little jealous. Sure. How are you actually making it look this full? Well, it's again, they're getting pretty good doses of fertilizer. Okay. So, yeah. uh, and when these things come in from growers, you know, when people say, I don't really feed my houseplants. Well, I guarantee you that the grower, the, the grower, grower did, afraid, of course, yeah, he yeah. did, <laughs> oh, or she did. Uh, trust me, they're really feeding, and sure. so you were really not going to be successful unless you're really on a regular basis mm -hmm. making sure they get with, good. With food. a plant like this, especially because, correct me if I'm wrong here, but like there's not a lot of photosynthesis able to happen no. in a variegated variety like this, right? Sure, all and variegated so, plants are tough to grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they are not as easy. And as simultaneously, the most popular, at least in the houseplant world, the exactly, variegated aeroids. Right. Everything's yep. becoming a variegated variety if yep. they can if they can possibly do it. So are you having then to like. Let's say let's take this one mm -hmm. and then let's say this one, mm -hmm. right? This one should ideally be in a little bit more light, right? Because it needs to photosynthesize a little, well, little more. Well, they do, but but part of the other side of the coin yeah. is they also burn easier. Yeah. So it's really a, a conundrum. Mm. So if you put it in more light, they burn easier <laughs> than if it were a green leafed collagen. Sure. Yeah. On the other hand, they need more light. So what we try to really do is get really bright light yeah but no direct light filtered down you know a bit. filtered down yeah. a little bit and then again with caladiums that's probably one of the more difficult plants if you're giving it tap water they're, okay. they're really not they're going to get very quickly you can even with yeah as I, clean I as mean, waters, you get some little it's burn, a little bit know. i wouldn't beat yourself up personally about yeah. this because i've <laughs> i've absolutely roasted these before oh sure they're easy <laughs> to roast yeah. Yeah, but you know it it does start to happen yeah but for the most yeah. part and then just cut it off yeah yeah <laughs> well yeah when you have one this bushy i think you can sacrifice a few leaves yeah. yep awesome any other like little standout sort of oddities because i know on the low level here mm -hmm. these are more of your so-called common house plants sure. but but each of these has its own unique story and unique history as well. Yeah, you know, there's so many good ones. I mean, so in the 70s, I can remember, I can remember, so I'm old enough, yeah. you know, I've been at this 100 years. 100 years old. 100 yeah. years <laughs> I've been doing this. And I can remember in 1973, I bought my first Boston Fern. Wow. I, I remember I they bought it. They were popular then though, They were they? really yeah, popular. Yeah. I mean, people would give their eye teeth to get a Boston Fern and yeah. they were, you know, counting for inflation. It was like eight or nine bucks in 1973. Okay, okay. So it'd be like a $100 fern. So, so, so there was a market back then sure. for, for plants in a more premium way, like there is oh, today. Oh, sure, there okay. was, yeah, 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 nothing like now. Yeah. But people did pay a lot of money for good stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember paying a lot of money for orchids, Phalaenopsis orchids. Who doesn't go to Trader Joe's? They're for free now, basically. They're almost for free, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, door prize? Welcome yeah. to Trader Joe's, yeah. have an orchid. I know, <laughs> you know, I know. I mean, like 10 Well, bucks, you get them, you get them for any celebrate, like some random person yeah. at a party will show up and oh, give sure. you an orchid. They give you days. an orchid as a door yeah. prize, you know. And back in the 70s, I was in the orchid business. So, yeah. you know, a Phalaenopsis like you buy at Trader yeah. Joe's back then yeah. was about 40, 50 bucks. They were very you know, expensive and account for inflation. On it. Talk, so talk to me about that because what I've seen is, let's say the fiddle leaf, right? Mm -hmm. That got big for oh, yeah. a good chunk of time and it was expensive and then mm -hmm. it wasn't, right? right? Because propagation never catches up with demand sure. perfectly, right? Sure. And I think for a while it was that. I want to say after that it was the um, uh, pink princess 
philodendron, philodendron oh, yeah, yeah. the Thai constellation monstera. Yeah, yeah. And so it feels like the market is made on a particular house plant sure. and growers are like, oh my God, all these people right. want this. Right. But we didn't know that they wanted it until yeah. some random person made it popular, you know, sure. some trend or whatever. Yeah. And then they rush to produce it, mm -hmm. but that lags by and they've however already, long it takes. They've missed the fad already. They missed so the fad. Yeah. yeah, and so they're behind the eight ball. Yeah. So it's like that uh, friend of mine, uh, Jim Bowman, mm -hmm. has Bowman Floral up in mm -hmm. North County. He's one of the best growers I know. Mm -hmm. Raises beautiful carnivorous plants. Uh, he's a Rex Begonia guy. Yeah. You know, for a while, you could give away Rex Begonias. I mean, they, they nobody were, wanted Rex it Begonia. Was a, it's weirdly a plant that looks so cool, but you got this sense of like, eh, yeah, eh, whatever, because yeah. it was everywhere. But, you know? but they were everywhere yeah. for a while, and they were worth a lot of money. Yeah. Then nobody wanted them. Now they're making a bounce back. Yeah. So, you know, it's... Just hang around. You know what we need it'll is a come plant. Back into we fashion. need like a plant prognosticator. So, someone who can tell me where the next thing yep. is so I can start growing it a year in advance. hundred years ago, you know. I would have told you, buy Microsoft. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Screw so plants. It doesn't matter. Yeah, for, don't even worry tech. about plants. Yeah. But there's some really neat plants. There, this there really this was are. really, I remember in high school, I bought my first, we called it back Blue then. Star this, fern, was, yeah. this was called polypodium back yeah, then. Yeah. Now it's phlebodium. But this was a very, very expensive plant. Yeah. I, I thought, wow. Oh, so, okay. I have a polypodium. Yeah. As, as we kind of close this tour out, I have a question for you. What do you think the next one is? If you had to just oh, guess. Oh, the next one. If you just had Boy. to guess. Because I know yeah. aeroids were hot for a while. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and, they, and they're still hot, but yeah. I feel like the coals are starting to smolder, yeah, yeah. right? And the flames are starting yeah. on something else. But I don't know what <laughs> sure. it is. I don't know yet I have either. no clue. I wish I knew. Yeah. Because I'd, I'd buy stock and maybe propagate them. I, I'd buy a little little home nursery there or something you go. like yeah. that. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, yeah. we had a vendor out here the other day that they are from Ecuador. Yeah. And there were maybe 25, 30 people lined up and they were all like your age, yeah. Kevin, you know, yeah. young people. And they're buying boxes at about 60, 70 bucks a piece. They had boxes <laughs> full of these things. And I'm going, wow. That's what, what they've said, and I don't necessarily believe this, is that us millennials can't afford a house and can't afford kids. Mm. So we have dogs and plants. There you go. You know, and yeah. we spend too much on those things instead. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. You guys tell me in the comments. John, thanks for showing us Kevin, the tour. It's been it's awesome. It's been so much fun. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much. Please guys, come back. You can check them out in the description. This event, if you're in the San Diego area, is still going on. So please come check it out. Even if, even if the event's over, it's a great spot to be in. Till next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.